Hi everyone, it's Kuna here. Um, going to see mausoleum. It's quite an own. It's like a, a tomb, like a, a belly side, but it's really something special about it, something nice about it. So I came here on the tour, but it's a lot of people. I will put on the tour when we get inside the the mausoleum. How are you everyone? Thanks very much for joining me. Very nice to see you. I hope you are well. Thanks very much. Thank you. I turn around and I see the two a lot of people there. สวัสดีค่ะพาท่านไปดูสุสานที่ความสมที่เก่าแก่ของท่านขุนนางอเล็กซานเดอร์ตระกูลท่านที่รวยยิ่งใหญ่ที่สุดในสมัยนั้นค
uh, his wee brother Archibald was the MP here for Lanarkshire. Uh, in 1806, he gets the plum posting in the diplomatic service. He is British ambassador at the court of the Tsar in St. Petersburg in Russia. Hence another one of the titles he would throw about, about himself. Uh, he was Alexander. Uh, in 1810, it's when they finally got married off to Susan Euphemia Beckford. Hence the reason why there's so many places in Hamilton with a Beckford name attached to it. Beckford Street, Beckford House, Beckford Lodge, where I come into the world. If the Hamiltons were the richest family in Scotland, the Beckfords were the richest family in Britain. Let's see, how old are you, young man? Yeah, right, see last year when you turned 10. How do you fancy? Open up your birthday card and find her a cheque for £200 million on it. <laughs> because that's what happened to William Beckford. His dad died when he was only 10, so he inherited the fortune. And that was the equivalent in the late 1700s. No, no. Raised on the slave and tobacco trade, but we'll keep that quiet. Anyway, uh, another mad eccentric, just like Alexander, the royal family friend. If you want to read about how not to build a stately home, read the story of Font Hill Abbey, William Beckford's house, or how he tried to build it on the cheap with workers bribed by drink from next door at Windsor Castle. That's why it kept on falling down every time he tried to build it. 1819, however, yes, Alexander's story took a big turn. That's when his father died. Therefore, being the, the eldest son, being the Marcus, that's when he officially became 10th Duke of Hamilton. So now that his hands are not just one, but two vast family fortunes, this is when he really started spending the money like there was no to. Mm -hmm. So his first project was the palace itself. Now the palace he inherited over there was Duchess Anne's palace, the second incarnation of the palace. A huge building. Wasn't big enough or good enough for him. So his cousin, David Hamilton, was commissioned. No expense spared to rebuild, reface and expand the palace. So after 10 years, at a cost of £200,000 then, what you end up with over there is the largest and grandest non-royal palace in Britain, if not Europe. All 150 rooms of it. One more window than Buckingham Palace. Yes. 365 windows in all. A window for every day of the year. Other projects, well, Chatelot, the hunting lodge, that wasn't big enough for him. He built on Gable House, the big hunting lodge down past Straven. Now, of course, sadly notorious as a asylum seeker deportation centre. Uh, when he's in St. Petersburg, one of the buildings of the Tsars he really loves is his, uh, the Tsars Riding School. Oh, when I'm Duke, I need one of them. So he knocked down the old stables, built his new riding school up there. That was ready in 1837. As far as we know, not a single horse has ever set foot in the place. So it's not just a pure vanity project on his part. But if it is. But this is him making a statement on behalf of himself and the family. So he actually had the grand idea of what it should look like. Very much from his travels and his diplomatic service, it was very much inspired by Hadrian's tomb in the Pantheon. So he did his own sketches, gave them out to the architects, told the architects, right, which one of you can come up with the best interpretation of what I'm looking for? Guess what? Nepotism was at work. Guess who won it? David Hamilton. Yes. <laughs> so this is his cousin's interpretation of what he was looking for. They start work around 1840, David Hamilton sadly dies only a couple of years into the project. After a wee hiatus, David Bryce, the London Bryce architect in Edinburgh, comes in, takes over the project, sees it through to his bitter end. So, one of the things we're not quite sure about is actually how long it took to build this place. We've got some sources saying it was finished in 1856, some saying it was finished in 1858. Uh, Burnham Bryce architects weren't finally squared up until 1860. What we do know, this grand edifice. We've just got two rooms. We've got the crypt and we've got the chapel. And the crypt was ready to take in borders, as it were, in August of 1852. So with due pomp and ceremony, and he did like his ceremonies, our boy saw these, the mortal remains of his ancestors in the lovely new old coffins, brought across from the collegiate church, relayed to rest within the walls of the crypt. Right lads, that's a great job. Well done. Good job. Well done there, boys. I'm off down to London on the business trip. I'll see you when I come back up. Right, Your Grace. You can start tearing that thing down now, boys, while I'm down there. Right, Your Grace. We'll see you when you come back up the road. There he is, the following day. Uh, down in his apartment in London at 12 Portland Square, sitting up in his bed. Goes to his butler. Do you mind getting me that book, sir? Yes, Your Grace. There you are, Your Grace. Your Grace. Your Grace. Yes, heart attack at the grand old age of 84. Very good age for the Victorian era. So they brought his body back up from London and held his ceremony 
it's the uh, first Saturday of September, 1852. Now, of course, this is Alexander's mausoleum. So do you think he's slumming it with the family downstairs? Oh, no, 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 no. He's got the upstairs all to himself. So the laying to rest in his great casket, more of which later. The thing is, the building wasn't finished. The floor still had to be laid. The dome still had to be completed. So once they actually laid him to rest in his casket, they had to build a brick shield around the casket to protect it where the rest of the building was being completed. Must have been great fun for the workmen. Go and broke your hammer on the Duke boys. Yay! Boom. Right, you start throwing some numbers at you. The building stands 120 feet tall. And, so the story goes, is 120 feet down. Similarly, there are eight pillars sunk into the ground. Then you put the foundations over the top. Then you flip your mausoleum on top of that. The walls at the base of the crypt are 15 feet thick. The walls at the base of the chapel, they're just five feet thick. But this is the biggest and best Lego set you have ever seen. I kid you not, there is no cement or mortar holding this building together. Just one ton of lime or lime putty used to do a wee bit of filling, a wee bit of pointing. All this sandstone, all quarries within a 12 mile radius, the blocks are all keyed into each other. So it's the weight of the building that's actually holding it together. So, without giving too much away, yes, the old girl has moved over the years. But it's been that flexibility that she's had. It's why she's been able to survive all the stresses and the strains of her adventures down here. Had she been properly glued together, she would have gone like the big Easter egg. Like the April Fool joke that the Hal Driver Kaiser tried to play a few years ago. <laughs> so, brought you around here first, not just because we start downstairs and make our way up. This is actually the front door. People think the other side is the front of the building. No, this is the front door with the three gates facing east towards Jerusalem. Very important point there. And you can see the carvings, the lines and the faces. These carvings and carvings you'll see within the chapel, all the work of one man, a Musselboro sculptor by the name of Alexander Handyside Ritchie. We're not quite sure how much he was paid for his work, but so the story goes. So impressed was the Duke with his work, Therefore, so well paid he was by the Duke, he was seemingly never in need of work again. But we think you're looking at seven years of work of work just doing all the carvings alone. So, home with him, we've got a good close up. We have death and we have immortality. Now, if we were here in official business, this guest is more than a Hamilton has been laid to rest within the building. We would have entered in through the life gate and made our way inside into the crypt. The coffin would be carried in through the death gate. When all was said and done, we would have been, I'll just repeat that, we would have been coming out of the immortality gate. But, don't panic, the death gate's the only one that gets open these days, so we're no tempting fate. No one news, sort of thing, you know, so we know we're all right. Now, of course, before we go in, there's all the various stories and tales that get told about this building. So, let's see if we can find somebody to pick on. Any cat owners in the house today? Any cat? Cat owners. Who's got cats in it? Oh, here we go again, good, good, good. Right, when cats are sleeping, when they're all relaxed and they're sleeping, are their claws in or are their claws out? When they're all relaxed, yes. Yeah, when they're all relaxed. Aye, uh -huh. so their claws are in, yes. Aye, oh dear, claws are out. Such was a shame and embarrassment by hand aside Richie making such a basic error. He promptly went away and committed suicide and embarrassment. Load of rubbish. I know the word. Sinister green lights on. It's great when we do this. Let's see who's going to be lost to find the escape route. Watch the view edge there. Watch the film triple edge. Um, uh, wash yourself there, folks. No, but I'm just wanting you that in case you think that's a joke tripping you up here as you're going in. And I say, we'll see if you can find the escape route. Oh, there we go. Hi, everyone. There was 17 bodies in here. They had been moved out from this tomb because the constant coal mine caused me to subside. Kau jok. Lihin, 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 
สุสานนี่พังแล้วก็ยุบลงค่ะเขาก็เลยเอาย้ายเอาศพไปฝังไว้ที่อื่นค่ะที่เห็นเห็นเป็นเป็นช่องช่องนี่แต่ก่อนมีศพข้างในนะเขาเอาไปฝังแล้วเอาไปที่อื่นแล้ว So the coffins themselves would get all would start rotting in here. It's all well planned in here. Now, unfortunately, the trick is walk in, take about four steps, and then Casting sections pinned together. Each door weighed three quarters of a ton, but they were so beautifully balanced. Once you turned the key in the lock and doors were in place, you could just use your pinky to push them open. And then again, you could just use your pinky to push them closed. And of course, when these things slam shut, the wooden doors we've got now absorbs the sound, absorbs the echo. Bronze, of course, is the opposite. Resonating. When the bronze doors were in place, that's when the mausoleum had its 30-second echo. And it had the longest echo of any built.